Welcome back. Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship is a global educational nonprofit focused on bringing the power of entrepreneurship to youth in low income communities. NIFTY's rigorous programs are taught by a highly trained teacher corps, and NIFTY students are supported by a diverse volunteer corps drawn from the local community, including businesses, leaders, and entrepreneurs. Joining me now to discuss NIFTY's efforts is the CEO of Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship, Dr. J.D. LaRock. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to be with you. Now, can you just tell us a little bit more about your organization and the work that you do? Well, the first thing I want to say is that NIFTY, the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship, is Bronx born. We were established in 1987 by Steve Mariotti, who at the time was a school teacher at Jane Addams, Jane Addams High School. And he noticed that his students were not always engaged in traditional classroom instruction, but yet they were very talented, they were very ambitious, and a lot of them wanted to start businesses. A lot of them needed money. So he piloted an entrepreneurship education program. Fast forward 36 years later, we are in 24 countries around the world. We are in 30 states in the US. We're serving more than 50,000 students each and every year through school-based programs, largely in underserved communities, just like you described. Our mission remains the same, to bring the power of inclusive capitalism, to low-income communities, and to build the next generation of diverse entrepreneurs. Now, I'm so excited. I'm happy that you said that I was born in the Bronx because I think that's amazing. We don't necessarily always hear about uh, things like this, you know, stemming from the Bronx or, you know, people often don't think that, you know, people in the Bronx have these types of dreams. Can you just explain, you know, why that was so important to kind of also just let everybody know, like, this is something that's from the Bronx and it was made for, you know, people in areas like the Bronx? Well, your viewers in the Bronx won't be surprised to hear this. People who are Bronx born, people from immigrant communities, people who were born in other places, they have some of this largest entrepreneurial drive and spirit of anybody, ever, anywhere. What they're often lacking is access to the tools of inclusive capitalism. And so this is what Nifty was set up to provide. The drive, the ambition, the ideas, um, people have that naturally oftentimes. What they don't have is the how. And so Nifty provides the how. We go into schools, we train teachers to deliver our program, we bring in community and corporate volunteers from companies like EY and PayPal, MasterCard and Microsoft, who support the learners and who support the teachers. And then we teach students how to create a business plan. And it all culminates in a Shark Tank style competition where students actually win real money to grow their businesses. That is very cool. I, I really like Shark Tank. And I always tell people that like, oh, I feel like I have business ideas. So, you know, it's really exciting to hear that. Can you just explain how it feels that your organization is highly recognized? I understand your evidence-based model leverages an award-winning curriculum. Uh, you have highly trained teachers. Um, and this all just sounds like such an amazing accomplishment. So, you know, how does it feel to be a part of something like that um, and that it's recognized widely? It feels great. I mean, you know, our country is founded on the ideas of opportunity and social mobility and equality, but we know that oftentimes those ideals don't live out, get lived out in practice. And so it feels really great to be part of an organization made up of, of actually current and former educators like me, I'm a former educator, um, who really care about bringing um, those tools and those values to the work that we do. And I'm very proud to say that Companies you will know of um, are, were founded by entrepreneurs from the Bronx, entrepreneurs from Brooklyn, entrepreneurs from Oakland, entrepreneurs from Dallas. They started out as regular people, but now they're big CEOs with billion dollar companies under their name or small business owners who have made a career and a life for themselves and their families. Now, something that I think is very interesting is that usually when we have these conversations about entrepreneurship or, you know, starting a business, we're usually focused on adults. Why did you want to reach out to the youth um, and why is it important to start young? Well, first of all, I think you need to start young because building a business is hard. Being an entrepreneur is really hard. And so what you first have to do is build the entrepreneurial mindset. And that's what Nifty programs seek to do. Yes, we're taking students through the journey of identifying an idea and building that up into a business plan. But we're also teaching them skills like collaboration, communication, presentation skills, financial literacy skills. You need those in order to launch a business. Also the ability to manage risk because having a business requires you to manage risk. 
opportunity recognition because building a business requires you to see an opportunity and see that that could be something you could make a business out of. So in addition to the functional things that we're doing, we're also working with learners to build those skills and mindsets. And then when you start early and you repeat the process, you can actually create big success in driving an actual community of entrepreneurs. Our alumni data show that students who have been through our program, about 25% of them wind up pursuing entrepreneurship as a career for life. That's amazing. Now, can you just talk a little bit, how do you teach someone, especially someone so young, how to have that entrepreneurial mindset? Uh, you know, what's your education policy or just, you know, what is the, the groundwork for kind of um, putting that information into people who are so young? Well, we start out with, with an assessment, which is kind of a fun thing. It's, uh, it's kind of like a personality uh, archetype and you take it and it shows you what your top three entrepreneurial mindset domains are. So it might be communication and future orientation and creativity. And that's a starting point, a great starting point for a lot of our students, because oftentimes they'll take this assessment and they didn't even know that they were the creative type. But this assessment is telling them that they are. The fun thing about the assessment is also matches you up um, to entrepreneurs in real life. So Oprah or Magic Johnson or Elon Musk or whoever. And so, of course, people look up to celebrity entrepreneurs in our culture. And we often light the spark when students take this assessment. And they're like, oh, you're telling me I'm like Oprah? I share those same qualities? All right, maybe I'll keep going with this thing. So that's one of the ways we start. That's amazing. That actually sounds like a lot of fun. I'm like, I kind of want to do something like that. It just seems cool. And I can imagine it inspires people uh, to see, you know, like people that they're already familiar with and how they may resemble or have some of the same qualities as them. So I think that's amazing. I do want to talk about COVID. You know, obviously it affected so many young people, especially in their schooling um, and how they learn and, you know, how they were educated. How did that maybe affect some of the work that you did in working with these children? Like everybody else, we had to bring our programs online. And we were really fortunate in that prior to COVID hitting, we already had a lot of our curriculum available online, so we didn't have to scramble. Nonetheless, we had to support our teachers um, in the ways that, of course, they were uh, needed to be supported in delivering math and reading and all the other stuff that they're teaching. I'll say this. Our corporate volunteers played a, a huge role during the COVID period. We, they were Zooming in um, from home, um, doing their support sessions, their mentoring sessions. We actually were able to dramatically increase volunteer and mentorship support to our Nifty students and our Nifty classrooms through, through COVID because now volunteers didn't have to travel to the school to be in touch with the kids and the teachers. They could do it via Zoom or via Microsoft Teams, and they did that. Now that we're back from COVID, we're doing it in both ways. And so that's one silver lining in the cloud of COVID. Now, I also want to expand on that. We saw that COVID, you know, there was a dramatic increase um, and people who wanted to work, people who possibly couldn't work. Can you just talk about, you know, how that kind of affected some of the work that you guys did in regard to maybe online classes? Um, and did it also have an impact on the kids and their outlook on working as well? Well, I'll tell you one way it impacted us as an organization. I told you we had a great we have a great team. So our team really wanted to do something for the world in light of the pandemic. And they knew that people were being adults, were being tossed out of their jobs, sectors were shutting down. So during the early days of the pandemic, we actually launched a program called Nifty Career Relaunch. We made it free to anybody throughout the world. And it was a basically a, a self-guided course that allowed people who, um, who needed a job to be able to get a job by turning themselves into entrepreneurs. More than 10,000 people in the US and around the world took part in that free resource. And, and it was so successful, we actually decided to launch adult serving programs uh, with community colleges and public four-year institutions and colleges as a result of that experiment during COVID. And can, are those um, programs still available? Can you just talk about them a little bit more? Yeah, they're still available. So we have a program that we use with colleges and universities called Start It Up. And it's basically the same idea as the programs we run in middle schools and high schools, except it's more geared toward adults. So it has some more advanced concepts and it has more content around how you actually um, get financing for your business and the things you do, um, you know, once you've actually launched the business. Now, we have about a few minutes left. I just want to know, like, and I know this may be a loaded question, but, you know, what can we do as a society to boost social mobility and make our capitalistic society just a little bit or hopefully a lot more inclusive? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, the U.S. is a capitalist democracy. 
And, you know, Nifty is not an ideological organization, but I would say that, you know, the whole you can't have free enterprise and entrepreneurship without capitalism and capitalism has done many good things for the world. The problem is it hasn't done good things for everybody. And there are certainly bad things about capitalism. So, again, what we're trying to do is to take the positive side of capitalism and bring those tools into community. Into, into communities that haven't had access to them. I think the, the core issue with capitalism, as I see it, is not that it's a good system or a bad system. It's just not a system that's equally available to everybody. So I think the way that we make it more inclusive, the way we improve it, is to do just what we're doing, to really work hard and intently to make sure that students who would be excluded from those tools actually have access to them. And I just want to talk about just the type of learning that probably goes on in the organization. Can you just explain, you know, the difference between project based learning versus experiential learning? Yeah. Well, see, here's the here's the secret sauce, I think, because I, p- students and teachers tell me all the time, we love Nifty. This is so much fun. It's like nothing else that we do in the school day. And the reason why is because unlike many other forms of learning, which are great, by the way, I'm not here to trash traditional learning. But I think the thing that makes entrepreneurship education really special for teachers and students is that you're starting with an idea that you came up with. You're starting with a problem in your family or your your community that you want to solve. You're starting with a passion that you have. And so the student businesses that, that emanate emanate from a very honest and authentic place for learners. That's one of the things that makes them want to keep going, even in the face of all the struggles that come along with building a business. And I also want to add to that, like just hearing like the personality, like, you know, assessment, it also gives them a chance to learn about themselves and not just learn about like something that was already, you know, like put out for them to just like listen to. Uh, It's something for them to grow and learn about themselves. So I can imagine that's why so many people like it. Um, But, you know, I just want to thank you so much for joining us and having this conversation. Uh, I think it was amazing. And this is something that I wish I could do. So uh, once again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. And if any of your viewers would like to find out more, they can go to our website, www.nfte.com. We'd love to work with even more schools in the Bronx and beyond. Wonderful. So as mentioned, to learn more about the networking for teaching entrepreneurship, please go to their website at www.nifty.com. We have to take a quick break, but we'll be back with more open right after this.